Look around and chances are you will see pockets everywhere. Wall pockets have a rich history. Early references mention wooden boxes hung on walls in strategic locations near entry doors or near the hearth to hold candles or matches. Pockets made from scraps of cloth held sewing items. Even early automobiles fe featured a pocket vase for flowers in the interior of the car. There is also a rich and varied history surrounding the placement of a face on a piece of pottery. In Appalachia, a scary face warned children to stay away from a jug of moonshine, serving as an early childproof cap. Faces on pottery grave markers were used to ward off evil spirits. In this project, we will combine the wall pocket with the face jug, resulting in a whimsical or scary face pocket. The contents placed in the pocket might be viewed as hair or an adornment for the face. Using firing or air dry clay and the slab method, a face pocket could serve as a planter or as a functional item to hold anything that might benefit from its own pocket. I've sliced a slab of clay right off the block and rolled it into a long slab. I'm going to roll both ways across the slab to minimize warpage and to align the clay particles. Now I'm just going to trim the slab into a rectangular shape. And I'm going to transfer the drawing of a face onto the top half of the rectangle. I want to get this all the way to the top. I'm going to trace it lightly. You could use a pencil or any a clay tool, anything with a sharp end. If you wanted to freehand your drawing of a face, you absolutely could do that. This just gives me an idea of where the features are going to be. I'm just going to lay that down. I'm going to use some paper toweling on the inside to support the walls. I might need a little more. Um, then what you're going to do is just push down around the outside contours of the face. Get those two slabs stuck together. And you can trim these outer edges at this point. Finish those edges out. Here's the next step. The clay is still very st soft and I'm going to push out from the inside to indicate where facial features will be. So I'm just going to go in, push the bra bone out, push the nose out. If your fingers aren't quite long enough, you can reach in with a tool. Just pop some areas out. Maybe push back down in under the brow bone. So at this point, we're just kind of getting preliminary features and creating some depth on the face. At that point, I would cover it um, and let it, cover it with plastic and let it set up overnight or to the leather hard stage. This piece has set up some, so I'm going to add further details to the features. Using tools, um, you can add in clay where I want to, further refining, you know, giving some detail to the eyebrows, building up the lips. There's still paper toweling down in here, so it's still being supported. In this example, I've added teeth by including broken pyrometric cones under the lips. These were low temperature cones. High temperature cones will remain white when they're fired. So when you're done adding your features, allow the pocket to dry completely. Air dry clay can be painted with acrylic paint, and if the clay has been bisque fired, a combination of glazes and paints can be used to finish the face. Further animate the face pocket by placing a plant, paint brushes, or even silverware inside. Please visit dickblick.com where you can find all the materials to create this lesson plan, along with a PDF and additional teaching ideas. Mm -hmm.